Hey, are you sick of horror franchises churning out prequel after prequel? No? Well, good news for you. The first omen is here to quench that never-ending thirst you must have. This one focuses on an innocent nun. You can see her silhouette behind me, right? Oh no, that's not the right one. It's actually this one. You could understand how I got confused. Because both these movies are out in theaters now and have the same exact background. That wallpaper was for Monkey Man, which I also reviewed on the channel. Feel free to subscribe if you like movie reviews. Let's talk about the first omen. The premise of the first omen is a simple one. A young American woman with dreams in her eyes and faith in her heart sets out to Rome where she's gonna pledge her life to the church and God. Seems okay on paper to her, but <laughs> things quickly take a turn when weird shit starts happening all around her. Now, if this premise sounds awfully familiar, it should. Because this movie came out two weeks ago and it was called Immaculate. These are the same movies. <laughs> like, they're, they're the same movie. Obviously, they're shot different, they look different, Immaculate is the beginning of a brand new thing, whereas the first Omen is very much leading into the OG franchise, but also leaving room to set off on a, like, a sidequel mission, like 300, The Rise of an Empire, kind of a parallel child timeline to the OG one. I'm going to share an interesting, embarrassing fact with you right now. I call them Adam Fun Facts, and here it is. I went to this movie, not seeing a trailer, going in fresh as a daisy, and the lead actress, Margaret, she looked awfully familiar to me, like I'd seen her before. She had very big eyes, she had wonderful features, a very beautiful young actress, and I thought, is that Alexandria Daddario? Did they just tone her down? Obviously, she's hidden underneath of the garbs that the, the nuns wear. They, they got rid of those baby blue eyes because they put this shitty filter on the film. And as the movie kept going, I kept thinking, that is Alexandria Daddario. And when the movie started to wind down, I was 100% confident it was Alexandria Daddario. It's not. It's not her. It's actually actress Nell Tiger Free who was in some Game of Thrones back a couple years ago. Remember that chestnut of a show, Game of Thrones? Uh, the, the one that came out everybody loved and then it went to shit and now nobody talks about it ever again? She was in that and some other stuff. And she's in this, doing a, a solid serviceable job. I don't think she's going all in like we just had with Immaculate. In fact, I think Immaculate's quite a bit better. For starters, it's an hour and a half long. This one's two hours. You feel it. It gets very cumbersome. The first half of this movie is kind of a chore to get through, to get to a point. There's so much slow buildup. I will say the second half is much better. There's a lot of promise here, but I don't think it fulfilled the potential that was on the table. Instead, it's just a somewhat fine movie, in my opinion. I'm not a big omen guy, believe it or not. I know, I, I scream omen, don't I? Like, oh, this is an omen guy. No, I'm not really that into those movies. This one was all right, though. I thought it was entertaining enough, but when I go out and see it in the theaters, no, I'd wait for this one to stream, personally. Listen, Daddario or not, Tiger Free is good looking. We also had Sydney Sweeney and Immaculate. So the nun fetish community out there, they're eating well. All right, horror fans, what can we expect from this movie? Is it scary? No, not really, at all. I, I, I don't recall. I think I was scared one time for maybe two seconds. But it's the most stereotypical scare you can get. Looking at a dark corner, there's a curtain blowing, you know something's gonna pop out and surprise it does. But then when it happens, there's kind of a cheesy sound effect, like a It wasn't that bad, but it was enough for me to go, oh, I can't believe I even got a little bit scared at that moment. That's really it. This film has so many lame cliches in it, from cars hitting people backing out into the roads. Mind you, this takes place in the 70s. Cars were not going near as fast as this asshole was. I'm just so sick of the whole, like, not looking where you're going, walking out into the road thing. That, that shtick is so played out. It also has the side swipe car shot, hitting the passenger window. I mean, come on. It's so beat for beat. And it's just, again, it's not scary. So if you're going for scares, it's tread somewhere else. What it does have are some pretty intense pregnancies. Raise your hand if you're into that. Anyone? No? No? Okay, yeah, I'm kind of with you. Who wants to see this? So we have some really intense moments where women are giving birth. The women giving birth fetish out there is really eating well this month. <laughs> That probably exists. You know it does. People are freaking weird. <laughs> Subscribe.
I guess to summarize this film, I would call it, as the kids say, mid. I don't know if they're still saying that, but I, I'm saying it now. I, I just got it. It's, it's, it's a mid film. It's exactly around a five or a six is where I would put it. You know what? I could jump it more to a six and a half. If we're giving out arbitrary scores, which I just did, I'd go six and a half, borderline. No, I can't go seven. I can't go. It's just so generic. And of course, it's got to like tip the hat constantly to the other movies. And it's just the same playbook shit over and over. And there's not enough here that separates it from anything else outside of pregnancies, which it's not, that's not pleasant. And I hate how this movie looks. They put this gross filter over everything to give it that old timey feel. Instead of filming it that way, you can tell they just did it in post. And I'm not a fan of that. It just washes everything out. Nothing's punchy. You don't get that contrast of colors or shadow and light. So it all just feels very flat. Almost like it's the raw footage they didn't bother to color correct. As for the music, eh, it's pretty quiet for the most part. You get theme songs blending in here and there. But what I found really interesting and engaging during this movie, the entire film by the way, was Godzilla X Kong blasting in the theater next to me. I could hear it through the walls. <laughs> And I'm just waiting for it because I saw that movie. When's it going to happen? When's it? When's the beat going to drop? And I'm like, yeah! Oh, I'm watching this movie. Not that movie. That's vibrating the walls and, and, and kind of washing out this entire film. <laughs> There's a lot of quiet moments in this movie. And you just hear like... So shout out to Regal Theaters and their paper thin walls. What an amazing experience the movie theater has become. I don't think I need to drag this on any longer than it needs to. That's what she said. I'm done with this. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, unless you're a big Omen fan, there's enough here. There's enough mystery and intrigue. And it's not insultingly stupid with character decisions. I was never frustrated with the lead. I found her very likable. There are some reactions she does throughout the movie where I scratch my head and think, really, this is how you're reacting? You are really chill. You are really calm right now. That little girl just licked your face and you're like, hey, you want to be besties? It was a bit bizarre, but outside of that, she was very likable. The movie was fine. It had some interesting ideas. It just took a long ass time to get to them. And again, I I'm kind of looking for scares or some interesting creature design or something. This movie's a cock tease with that. All right, those are my thoughts on the first Omen. I keep wanting to call it the first Owen, like Owen Wilson's first movie, but that's not what this is. Let me know, did you like this? Are you excited for the second Omen? Not to be confused with the original Omen and the third Omen, which is actually gonna be a direct sequel to the first original Omen and not have anything to do with this because Hollywood has the craziest naming conventions ever and I'm losing my fucking mind. Let me know. Again, please subscribe to the channel. Again, I don't even know if I told you to to begin with, but yeah, oh, I did. I did because of the, the pregnancy fetish. <laughs> God, what a disaster. I'm Rotted Tomatoes certified. <laughs> oh god i also have a second brand new channel adam does rants there's a couple of videos there already i'm just complaining about everyday things that i think people need to complain about such as dicks being rude on their phones or public bathrooms being a complete nightmare that the public bathrooms are scarier than anything that was in this film i'll say that much i, I i'm legitimately scared now to go into public restrooms it's it's nightmare fuel okay that's all i have thank you for watching and if you want to support the channel Patreon, patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. Tons of perks there. Would love to have you. See you next time.